Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And good evening. It is Monday night. It is nine o'clock. Uh, it is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable modmaster that is Mark. Um, much excitement in in the shed this week. Um, right behind my head, um, we have new tools. Um, I'm not sure whether you're going to see these, but if I sort of do that and you look that way, we have the lathe installed. Good fun. Um, yeah, it, it came uh, last week, and um, this week I'm, I'm basically filming, um, setting it up, and having a little play. I didn't realise just how difficult those things were to play with. Last time I played with one was when I was at school, which was a damn long time ago, I can tell you, um, or it feels like it. Uh, and Mark is continuing to uh, to do his uh, his repair job um, this week on his, his mod transplant, um, sticking you know, sticking all the gubbins in the new case. Good stuff. I've uh, had a little look. Uh, one thing I want to do very very quickly before we crack into the show is this. <laughs> And there we go. And as you may have heard uh, last night in David Kitchen's show, um, the, the figures are uh, staggering. Um, I had a quick look before we come on, and £10,940 with 154 people pledging. Um, I did mention last week, and I know we had problems uh, with, with the audio at some point, um, but uh, obviously my contribution is going to be we're putting up a couple of mods uh, for sort of like a, 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 an auction type thing on, on our forum um, and I've put up the Stumpy mod um, that is on there currently and I believe the bid is already at uh, £100 um, for Stumpy so uh, as soon as that finishes and it is going to end I think on about the 20th of May live on this show at 8 30. So there is, uh, there's still room and we're going to put up some other bits and pieces on there as well, same sort of format. Uh, effectively, if you are bidding on that, you are bidding uh, if you like to win um, and, and the winner basically puts their pledge, which obviously now will be taken. Um, when we first put that on, it was touch and go as to whether you know we would hit that. Um, obviously, we hit that very, very rapidly. Um, so very well done to, to everybody out there uh, who's taken part. And please continue, continue pledging. Um, because uh, Andy is, is going to give us a rundown on what the additional funds can do, um, and and if you like the the, the ten thousand, as far as I understand, is a good you know good starting point to, to get it going. Anything over and above that now really does help to uh, to contribute to to getting a, uh, a top class production out there. Um, enough waffle from me to start with. I am going to uh, I'm going to show you me lathe. Um, I'll show you this pop back in a bit. Well this week we've got something a little bit different for you. Um, we've got new toys. Um, we have one of these. Variable speed mini lathe. Um, which basically means uh, I am probably likely to seriously injure myself in the near future. Um, I haven't done anything to, to set it up yet. I just have a bag of bolts. Um, I ordered a, a quick release um, tool post thing, um, the standard tool post, and comes with it obviously. Uh, it's come with a load of cogs, a little oil thingy. Um, we've got to get the safety guard on. Uh, I've got a rear chuck thing here that goes in. Apparently, this is the the standard sort of centering piece. Um, but I have another bit that also goes in there that holds a static chuck for drilling. Um, so, yeah, excited. Uh, it is very speed. It has got, and this is the, the best bit I like, it has got a big 
red button to turn the damn thing off. Um, all your safety bits and pieces under there. Variable speed readout, it's got a knobby thing there to make it go faster and it, as you can tell I haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Um, I've removed most of the of the packing grease. Uh, there's still a little bit sort of on, on the top of here to, to get rid of um, and then I've, I've got to effectively um, get this thing all uh, sort of greased up. Um, but hopefully, hopefully today, what we might try and do is is set it up in in some way, shape, or form, um, and go from there. But this is a standard tool post that, that if you like, comes with it. Um, and and in in that scenario, you've got a little clamp down on there. You can tell this is going to be painful. Um, it's got a little clampy thing that goes down on there that holds the uh, tool post. In, and then you would take one of your one of your tools. Now I I sort of ordered a um, a nice little set of of these. So I've got uh, I've got a clue what I've got to be honest with you. Uh, but I know that these things cut metal um, and plastic. <laughs> How I don't know. Um, but yeah, th there are some I think some left hand, some right hand, some some uh, some threading tools, uh, a cut off tool, and and a facing tool. Um, yes, how we use them, I just don't know. I've been frantically looking on, on YouTube and this and the other. Uh, come with a load of other bits and pieces. So I've got a chuck for me spindly end. Um, God knows how many bolts this that, and the other. The the one thing that that I've been trying to work out what to do with this is the um, standard tool post. So you would you'd put your um, uh, what you're going to be tooling with in the end there and clamp that down. And then you've got all your, your doodars that you can shift it in that way and sort of shift it around that way. Movable rear stock end there. So you can get all your bits going like that. Um, but I wanted a quick release one. Um, I don't know why. Uh, it just seemed like a good idea at the time. And the one thing I will say with this, it come with no instruct. Well, a little bit of instruction, um, roughly translated from Chinese, um, basically saying do not kill yourself. Um, I know, I think I know, um, what all the bits do, uh, but essentially you, you get this bit which, which uh, and this bit, and I'm assuming that bit slides in there, um, and then there's a big bolt that sort of goes on the end of there. Now I think the way that this works with the quick release post, there's one of those that sit on there, and your clampy bit goes on the top there. And I think what this enables you to do, you have these jobbies then that you can have your different um, different bits in. So let me just clamp that down tight. So you've got your different bits that you can then chuck these in. It's all technical stuff, isn't it? Tighten that up on the end with the right Allen key. And then these effectively would have your bits already held in. So it's, it's a lot quicker to change. You just slacken that off at the back. Slide out one tool. And slide in the other tool. But there, there's so many so many bits um, that I've got to look at. Um, I've got, like I say, I've got to clear off quite a lot of the, the, the packing grease. Um, getting the safety guard on and all that sort of stuff. Um, probably until I work out exactly how, because I've got so many nuts with that quick tool post, I just haven't got a clue what to do with it. I need to read, um, I need to, to look at the net and I need to do some research. But hopefully if I if I pop away and we'll, we'll start getting um, some of this grease cleaned off, I'll get my safety guard um, installed and, uh, and we might give it the first the first fire of the motor that it's had. Um, I've not fired this thing up yet. I've, I've been waiting to sort of uh, to do it live, and we may even we may even at some point um, try and stick because I've ordered some alley tube. We might try and stick a bit of tubing in there just to have a look. But uh, yes, new new toys in the uh, in the shed this week. Um, we're going to have lots of fun with this. Lots and lots of fun with this. 
I'm going to pop away. I'll come back in two, and um, hopefully I will have safety guards and, and things like that in place and clean off the grease. Um, I've been absolutely covered in grease, just trying to clean the thing up um, and then re-lube it with, with some machine oil. Um, but uh, excited, excited, dibbly. Um, God only knows what we're going to turn out with this thing. I will pop away and come back in two. So, we've got all the holes drilled and the next job I need to do, because of the way I'm putting it together, is to put the coating on the front, because I want to cut through the coating for this hole and this hole before I put the switch across it, otherwise it gets difficult to do. So, I've cut out a sheet the right size and with the back half I'm just going to lay this flat on the bench. Try and get something fairly central, like so, and check that side's okay, and that side's okay. Well then, don't be too stingy, leave a bit of overhang all sides, that way you can just cut it off afterwards, it's a lot easier than trying to position this stuff exactly. So just smooth everything down into place. If you're using a good quality one like this. It has air holes in it so you won't get any bubbles whatsoever. Just a matter of pushing it firmly down into place. And then you need to trim it all off. First one. I'm going to cut off the sides first and then because I can in my way. Just try and run a sharp knife down the edge level with what you want. I normally find the starting off bit most difficult. After that it's just a matter of running the blade all the way down. run back across later to trim off excess and get a really good edge to it. I think I need a sharper blade actually. The tip of this blade appears to be getting blunt. But it will do for now. So I'm only going to roughly trim it up for now and do the rest later on. If you feel on the top, I can feel there's the hole for the display and up here is the hole for the switch. So I'll just pop the knife through. And just run it around the hole for the switch. don't need to be too neat about this really because it's covered by the switch itself. I definitely need a sharper blade so... Just a quick swap over. that one done. Now the more difficult one is going to be the display. And what I want to do is leave a slight overhang if possible. I may or may not succeed, I don't know. It's hard to judge at this angle.
I'm around a bit there, we shall see where you have this plane, I suppose. Let's have a look. Ah, that won't be too bad. I'll be this plane, play this, the switch. I'm basically on there now. It's all just a matter of gluing everything into place. And the first job I'm going to do is the display itself, I think. Because that one will be awkward. And I'm probably going to have to set it with epoxy. I'll be back when I've done that. Right then, so giving the epoxy a chance to set in. Uh, so what I did is, before I started, I did a layer of insulation tape right the way across so that the display had something to hold it in place while everything was going on. So I'll pop that out. And as you see there's the display in place, nice and solid. And I took the opportunity to coat the entire back of this with a layer of epoxy to insulate everything. Because I did notice that when it was originally made you had noticed the same problem. I had to put insulation tape across the back of here to stop the circuit board from shorting out against any of the pins or anything like that. So, to put this together, I'll start. And there we go, our first little section over and done. Um, yes, to answer a few of your questions that, that were being poised in chat, what is the first thing I'm going to uh, make from the lathe? Um, Basically, I've been making lots of stringy bits of metal um, and not much else. Uh, I've, I've only had the uh, sort of, you'll see, I've been practicing. I, I, I wanted to have a little practice. Um, I've ordered some some cheap stainless and uh, and some decent 316 stuff. I'm going to have a, a play. I am by no means uh, uh, an expert in lathes. I don't even know what the tools are called. Um, but I've been doing a lot of research. <laughs> We'll get there one day. Um, I'm going to pop into our first little ad break and uh, and see if you can spot the new one. Catch you back after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, back again, and a brand new advert there from uh, from Isigzu. Good to see uh, those guys on board. Um, yes, lots of good stuff. And uh, it was frantic last minute editing to, to get that uh, new ad slapped in there somewhere in the middle. Um, I am going to rapidly move on. Um, I waffled far too much at the beginning. Um, we start to get a little bit dirty now with the lathe. Um, probably wrong thing to say, but we do. Um, here we go, I will pop back after this next little set of videos. Right, well I'm back, uh, I've managed to secure this on and apparently this is this is quite important. Um, 
I think one of the things I, I looked at when I was looking at, at lathes, um, uh, not knowing absolutely anything, was, was obviously as much safety as possible. I know I've got this kill switch um, here, uh, and this thing here, effectively. I think a lot of the instruction videos I've watched, um, with people tightening in on the chuck, I think there are various ways of, of sort of doing it safely. One of them, I believe they have sprung loaded chucks, so when you, you stick your chuck in, you've got to push it in and it will automatically release. What this one actually does is it's got a safety switch built in here and it will not operate unless that is in a down position. Obviously you can't put that down if you've got a chuck in and you can't start it up and this thing starts spinning and that fly off in your face. It says. Um, so with this down, let's, uh, let's fire this, this boy up for the first time. I've actually put a tool in the post as well. Um, we're going to have a go at something, he says. <laughs> so effectively, after reading the instructions, um, you've got to have this position in the forward running gear. Um, up there is a power button that illuminates the spindle speed, um, which is up here. And then you have a little, like you would have on a, a mod, you've got your very, you know, very volt or very speed thing going on. So, <clears throat> he says, let's power this up. Now, I know it pulses. So effectively, uh, at low revs, it will pulse um, until it finds any, it's something to do with the circuitry. Um, and effectively, what, what this one will do is because of the circuitry that's built in, uh, it, it pulses so under load or under under the uh, you know when you're tooling it, it keeps that the the RPM at a steady speed. But this one, let me turn it up. It's going to get a little bit noisy. Now it's, it's splattering the hell out of this and it's splattered the hell out of the wall behind because there is so much packing grease in these or, or shipping grease in these things it is incredible um, I think what we might well do is give something a bash I'm gonna go and find a, um, a little bit of metal now I don't have I mean I've, I've got some on order um, I've been watching videos this and the other this is the first cut I've, I've made with a lathe um, since school so uh, could be interesting um, but effectively you can see on there I've got all my, my bits and pieces up if I kill this don't, as soon as I lift that up it kills the power to, to the device the other good thing with it that protects your knuckles when that's spinning you don't want to be catching your hand on that um, thing there so I'm going to get a, uh, a bit of metal um, clamp it in the jaws um, we'll see if we can go uh, a different shot um, overhead or, or zoomed in or something like that and uh, and see what we can do with our, our first little attempt um, as I say we have metal on the way I have plans I, I do want to make some other bits and pieces this one by changing the gears and this that, and the other can also cut threads um, so it's got an auto runny thing that you snap down there and it goes on the spindle thing and I haven't got a clue what it does um, this is going to be a learning journey for me and, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll go through it as, as we go. Um, hopefully there would be no, no limb loss or finger loss. The one thing I am going to do um, most definitely with this is uh, stick the, the goggles on. Um, I don't fancy a chunk of that up in the face or, or whatever it is. But let's, let's see what I've got lying around um, and, and we'll clamp it in the jaws and, um, and we can have our first ever bit of uh, lathe experience on, on Tinny Tip. I will pop back into. To put this together, and I'll start off by popping the negative back in place. I think we can go there alright, and the other end of the connectors can go in. And they again just slot back down into the retainers there so I think the next job I need to do is probably going to be uh, switch 
control. Now I'm going to fix the variable resistor into place, I think. As that one could be quite fiddly. So, what I will need is a bit of super glue. Ah, slight oversight, sorry about that. I'll touch the super glue, and what I'm going to do is put the super glue onto the case rather than onto this. And just because I think it'll be a bit easier. Just a dab around the hole, all the way around. That's a bit better with the cap. And this just wants to fit in pretty much centrally in the hole and and grab the knob I'm going to be using just to make sure that I've got everything in the correct place before it sets. And then I can easily move it there. So I'll just give that a few seconds to set off. Now it's had a chance to set and I need to pop the switch in. So it's just going to be a simple matter of pushing it through the hole. And I think I wanted to go that way around. Just a quick click into place. What I should probably do in the end is add some epoxy into the base of here once everything's in place. To hold everything so it doesn't move and just lock it all together. So, switch now. This is the wire for the power to the board. You might notice there's a wire less that I'm not putting back on. That was to the connector which had an LED in it. So the wire just went straight from the switch to the LED. As I'm not using the connector, we won't be using the LED. So, I'm just going to try and pop this one here through the hole. So I'm trying not to redo any of the wires. It's easier said than done. This way on it. There we go. So let's put the wire in the hole and a little bit of solder and we'll just turn up the tip. And sort of the way in place. Unfortunately, a bit of the insulation has come away at the same time. But I can deal with that. By insulating with it some of the, with the, some of the epoxy. So the other end will be the positive connector for the battery. Already had its wire connected, so I'll use that one just the same. So I'll pop that into place, pop the wire through the hole, and see it again. Very quick solder to it, and we're done. And the only two wires left now 
rather positive, which is this long yellow way here, which I need to untangle. spaghetti so it's just a matter of working the wires out like so that's the positive which will pop through the hole give me a little, a little bit of room to work and the negative Okay, so we're upside down. Um, I'm over the the lathe. Um, I've got a tool bit in, a bike bit. God only knows what they're called, but we've got one of those in place. Um, I've got the, uh, I don't know how light this is, can't see a damn thing. Um, I'm going to zoom down, let me see how far I can go. And... Uh, now, we're not doing anything amazing. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. Um, but, actually I can just adjust some of that light. Hopefully that's a bit better. But you should be able to see, what I've effectively done is, is clamped a, um, uh, a the old piece of the, the Vamo tube on tend there. Um, and I'm just going to roughly bring this in. Now, please bear in mind, I do not have a clue what I'm doing. Um, all I've done at this stage is watched a few uh, YouTube videos. Um, the, the thing, I think, with this is is to play. Um, I used one of these a long, long, long time ago. Um, somebody's bound to say, I've got my tool set up wrong, I've got something done wrong. Uh, if that's the case, great, let me know, because, as I say, don't have a clue what I'm doing. Um, this may get noisy, but I, I'm just I, literally I'm going to have a play. Um, this is the threaded end of the Vamo. I'm just going to have a go at just taking a little bit of metal out. Um, never done it before. Um, yeah, at school, it was it was what God twenty odd years ago. Um, he says, "Let's turn this on, see where we go." You might get a lot of noise and vibration. I just haven't got a clue. It's going to turn out.
bit of clue what we did there. Um, but yeah, I don't, let me see if we can go down a little bit more on that. We can. We sort of just made a few grooves. Um, yes. But it was cutting. Oh, it, it cuts well, looking at it. It looks nice. Well, basically, add, add the, the threaded end on here. Um, let's see if I can get in a bit closer as you can have a look. But, um, yeah. First play, liking it. Um, it seems to cut very, very well. Um, I, I never had, you know, owned a lathe before. Um, haven't got a clue, but it seemed to be doing the right things. Um, I didn't take an eye out. Um, there we go. I'll pop back in two. And there we go. Um, yes, my first little play, my first little cut. Um, didn't know what I was expecting, and and that was the the, the chrome end of of a. Uh, Vamo tube so literally just having a play um, getting used to it and and still am getting used to it I'm going to pop into our second little ad break and uh, we will see you back very shortly after this Liberty Flight sponsors 10 year tip with Gary Dibley again so yeah I'm not 100% sure whether that little bit of metal was in fact the first template for the uh, for the Dibati or for the GDTS I'm, I'm not 100% sure what that was but it was a play um, I think uh, we were talking earlier Mark's got some new tools obviously we've got uh, I've got new tools and I've still got a stack of wood over there somewhere um, and I think uh, we, we're going to potentially at some point in the future do sort of a, a co-op thing um, not not the shopping centre um, but me and Mark will be uh, potentially making something a little bit together. You make a bit, send it to me. I make a bit, send it back to him. Could go on for weeks. Um, I don't know. Don't even know if that's a good idea. But I'm sure we agreed at some point, Mark, didn't we? I think. Um, I'm going to crack straight on with our next little bit because uh, I'm rapidly running out of time. Um, let's have a close up of, uh, of of what we did on the lathe. And there we go. A li little bit more sort of uh, close up view of of what we played with. Um, it's not a mod by any means. It's it's a new tool, and I'm playing. And and literally all, all I was, you know, doing is an end of a Vamo tube. Um, first ever go on this lathe, and and it is. I've I've saved it for uh, for today. But literally all all I did is smoothed out the the threading portion that was on there, and just stepped it up. Just really getting used to the controls. Um, and and I intend to to get a load of scrap and uh, and try and play um, but it seems to cut very well it, it's stepped nicely it's smooth no doubt that would polish up quite well um, it looks nice and shiny as it is um, but yeah I, I really I, I need to have a play um, we will be doing um, some of the uh, some mods on this um, me and Mark uh, do have uh, some some new tools, um, and I'll tell you the one thing that's going to drive me potty. It, I'm going to get it, 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 there's metal filings everywhere. I mean, I don't know if that's normal with the lathe, but <laughs> that's going to drive me potty. It's going to make the workshop messy. Um, I know workshops are supposed to be messy, but everything seems to be running well. 
uh, I've got to grease this up a bit more. The the whatever this bit's called um, seems a little bit stiff. It may well loosen up. See, uh, give it a couple of months, and 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 we'd be talking this properly. But um, this this was my my introduction uh, in into the uh, into the little mini lathe. Um, what we're going to do with it, we intend to do all sorts. Uh, we're we're going to make or attempt to make um, a mod uh, from from a solid bar. We, we're going to attempt to. I'm definitely going to be making some uh, some some top caps. Uh, we'll, we'll try and have a go at some some drip tips, um, all of that sort of stuff. So loads and loads and loads. I'll still be doing all the, uh, the soldering stuff, but this is going to add uh, another tool to the uh, to the arsenal this this one is 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 definitely going to make things a lot easier rather than sort of uh, trying to find bits to fit um hopefully now we can we can make them and and i do see in in the very near future when when i get to to groups with this um with mark's new toolage uh you know there's probably a, a good few co-op sort of um mods to be had on there where where we do something on this and send it over to mark to uh to, to add his bits um, but there we go uh, the first bit the the unveiling of, of the new uh, the new tinny tip tool um, there we go I'd just like to dedicate this this you know especially going out to Dean today Dean Monahan um, who who is is uh, him and his family watch and uh, and avidly take the uh, take the Michael so this one's going out to you <laughs> okay uh, back to me in the studio Bring in my usual stand and screw the connector to it. And because I've got so much positive wire to play with, I'll solder the positive first and get that one out of the way. So quickly tin up the wire and tin up my connector. the negative done. So I'll we'll just get that solder back up. Drop your wire down into the hole like so. And I forgot to tin up the negative wire. in view. Just push the negative wire against the solder on the edge. And we're done. Now just let that cool. And when we're all done, we're back to insert it. So now it should be cooled. So carefully I just need to Oh, 
release the vase without pulling the wires off. And then I just need to pop it back through the hole. Like so. I'm just going to play this. In fact, I pushed it a little bit too far. Push it down nicely. I'm not going to be super gluing it in. I will be adding epoxy to all this once we're done. As you can see, the circuit board is uncomfortably close. That was to that. So we had a layer of epoxy around the inside of this, around here to seal that in place, and around the switch, and a bit on the circuit board to hold it all in place so everything stays out of the way. But before I do that, I need to make sure I've done everything correctly. So, a pair of eyes. That's the first one. And the second. And now if I press this button, there we go. You'll see it flashing on the screen, but that's an effect of the camera. Not an effect of the battery. It's currently reading 5.03 volts. And if I turn it, now it reads 606. So if I turn it the other way, 463, 433, and then we have 4 around where I'd want it to test it and if I'm very much mistaken there should be a cartomizer here somewhere to test it with. Indeed there is. So my usual. I have to carefully screw this in place because remember I haven't set it in place yet. But Press this and I'm still reading 4.0 between 2 and 4. Sizzling nicely, so we are all good. So now I have the back cover on. And there you have it. A fully transplanted mod. Uh, hopefully you'll be happy with that. So that's it done. I've just got to glue everything in place. But I'm sure you've seen enough of that already. Catch you next time. One thing I didn't show you, um, very very quickly. Uh, it's got locking tail stop that we can lock in place and, and effectively um, I've, I've just looked on on the tube and apparently what you need to do is extend this bit by a few mil and effectively you throw your your center stop in and it absolutely locks it solid um, absolutely locks it solid before it's spinning around now to remove it you go back the other way and effectively what that does is puts a little bit of pressure on there and then releases it out. Clever bit of kit. Which hopefully then means it will work the same with my other adapter thing that I have here. So if I throw that in, that's locked solid and what that means then is I'll be able to get my chuck on there. And then that is a fixed solid chuck that effectively when that's tightened down it holds the uh, the bit let me see if I've got a bit you can stick your bit end to end and effectively that keeps it locked solid um, so when you're, you're drilling your doodahs in your watsits 
moving that up close to where you're going and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, and again, that is locked in there solid until I reel back and that will release me, uh, me chuck. Happy days. All new toys. Um, I have been a bit more adventurous and, and made some of this stuff. Um, good, there you go. So that is our mod this week. Some metal filings. Um, I have had another little play. I'm not going to show you that. Might do. Might do. I might get it out and show you. Hold on. Very quickly. Very, very quickly indeed. Um, but yeah, uh, the other end of the of the Vamo. Whoa, where's the camera? Other end of the Vamo. Um, I've just been playing with um, the various bits and pieces and all of that sort of stuff, and uh, playing to see what what we can do. Um, better to play with it, sort of scraps like this than than anything. Do you know what? I think one of those Vamos like that, shaved down and polished up. In the uh, in the brassy stuff that's underneath <laughs> would be quite nice. Um, might be worth a go actually. I'm not going to do it now, obviously. Um, but yeah, our lathe uh, learning. If my metal comes and and we have a, a decent enough bit of time next week, we'll we'll be putting this thing through its paces or maybe making a part for another mod I don't know whether we'll sit again for a couple of weeks I want to have a practice um, we will get on with something and we will make something at some point but I need to get to grips with it this was the introduction back to me in the studio so there we go yes I did in fact make uh, some shaving things um, and I now know that the uh, the, the in and outy thing um, is actually the bed didn't know that um, in the outy thing turns into a bed um, reminds me of something I don't know what uh, but yes that is that was effectively our, our little introduction to to the lathe and uh, and mod uh, mark mod mark mark doing his mod transplant uh, looks really good in the end um, very very nice jobs all round I think where are we gonna go in the future I do not know what we're gonna do next week haven't got a clue um, I am gonna just play this ever so quickly <laughs> He's terrible at doing that. Pressed the wrong button completely. So yes, uh, keep pledging on the uh, on the uh, Swarf campaign. Um, make sure the pledges keep coming in. That target may well have been hit at, uh, at sort of nearly, nearly, ever so nearly eleven thousand pounds. But as I said earlier, anything extra that comes into that fund is going to be used um, uh, yeah, to, to help make a far. Not that it's going to be not be bad at ten grand, but it's going to give a lot more resource. Um, a lot more resource to, to getting that done. Um, I'm sure Andy, I'm terrible explaining this. Like Andy will give you the full details next week. Um, don't forget to uh, to tune in for the remainder of, of this week. Uh, shows right the way through. Um, Mark tomorrow night, uh, followed by VT Talk. I'm sure Dave will have uh, lots and lots of uh, good stuff to, to tell us on uh, on Wednesday. On Thursday, it's a haze hour. On Saturday, uh, we have uh, Andy Sutton back giving us uh, an update, no doubt, on all of the uh, all of the campaigns. And I, I believe he, he mentioned something about a, uh, a new a new bomb or, or mailing campaign that will be going out. And on Sunday, it is Dave with his tackle box. Um, obviously, he's he's mid Switzerland at the moment, so uh, hoping he will get back and, and get a nice show together for us. Um, with all that said, guys, I am rapidly running out of time. I'm looking down uh, now at Cat, and she hasn't screamed at me yet, but I'm pretty sure. 
she will very very shortly so i'm going to call it a night thank you very much guys thanks for tuning in um yes hopefully next week i'll be back still with the full 10 fingers um catch you next week cheers guys Tip with Gary Dibley.